All right, all right. I am so thankful to be here with you tonight. I can't tell you how thankful I am. And now I've had several requests, but I'm going to go ahead and preach anyway. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, but bear in mind, it's okay. You know, I'm going to do my best to keep the five B's of preaching applicable to tonight as best as I can. Now, now you know what the five B's of preaching are, right? You guys know, right? No. Okay, well, take your notes down. This is the most important thing you will need to tell preachers and, and tell them to stick to the five B's of preaching. You ready? Here they are. Be brief, brother. Be brief. Okay. That's good. Now, so I will do my best to be brief. Now, all fun aside, I'm nobody. I mean, I'm nobody. I'm just Steve. There are more than you out there who probably deserve to be up here more than I. I can go through my list. I've been in the ministry this long. I've done this. Pay what to do. I'm learning just like anybody else. And I acknowledge that. I am nobody. And if you see anything good in me, you need to know it's not me, it's him. If you see anything bad in me, I promise you that's me. Okay? Now, before going any farther, I used to run track. Anybody used to run, do sports in your high school and stuff like that? I used to love track. And, you know, we'd always used to stretch real good. You got to stretch good. You know, the coach would always talking about that. And then I ended up going into the workforce, you know, and kind of find out they make you stretch there too, you know. And, and it was so funny. And, and so I, I started realizing, you know, stretching is a good thing. How many stretch on a daily basis? Really? Wow, I am really impressed. Good for you. Now, <laughs> what I want you to do, do something with me real quick. Let's do a, a small stretching exercise to get ready for the day. You know, they're ready for the night. Get ready to hear the word of God, right? So, now, have, have you ever stretched your shoulders? Take, let's just take one of your shoulders and to the side and drop one of them as low as you can. Just drop it. I mean, as low as you make it feel. feel it. Do you feel the pain? Sorry, okay. So, okay, now, now do the other side real quick. Just kind of drop as low as you can. All right, now, every night, some of you are just looking at me like, whatever, Steve, I ain't doing that. Keep on doing it, mm-hmm. See, see, see? Okay. Now, take your head and just tilt it real gently. Real, if you feel a pull, that's okay. Now, with that other side, now drop your shoulder. Ooh, oh, yeah. That's when you really feel it. Okay, now do the other side. Okay. All right, we're ready to go. You ready to receive the word? Yep, amen. Amen. Okay. I come from a, a Pentecostal background, as I, I told those who were in our, our, my uh, breakout session. I was known as the Baptocostal at the Baptist Church, you know, and, and that's okay. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Um, so I want you to know that if you feel led to shout hallelujah, amen, you go get them, boy, something like that. I like that. Okay. 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 That being said, let us begin tonight. Turn to the book of Revelation, if you will, please. Revelation, chapter 3. Revelation, chapter 3. It's on the screen, going with verse 22. And it says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. To the churches. The title of tonight's message is It's Time to Raise Hell. And I'm talking R A Z E, as in cut down, destroy, annihilate. It's time to raise hell. Let's pray. Father, we love you and we praise you. And right now I am coming before you. I am, I am just. We need you. 
There's nothing that I can say that has never been said before. The words I speak are nothing new, and they are nothing without you. I am begging you, Father, speak through me. Let the very words from your throne flow through me tonight. Open the ears of your people. Open the hearts of your people, including me, to receive from you. We need you. We need you. Father, we need you. Father, we need you so much. Open our hearts. I'm begging you, please, tonight. Do not let us leave this room the same way we came. Please. In your name, and everyone agree by saying, Amen. Excuse me. How close to the Father are you? Think about it. How close to the Father are you? And only you can answer that question. No one, and other people may be trying to judge you, that's fine, but only you know how close of a relationship you have. You know your walk day in and day out. You know where you fail. You know where your strengths are. You know how close you are to him, and only you know. Moses' face shone bright because he was so close to the Father. Moses' face shone with the glory of Yahweh. Can you imagine? I mean, really. It's not a story made up. It happened. Think about that for a second. Now, this is like so cool. I have a good friend of ours. She just visited, her and her husband visited us down in Costa Rica the last couple months. And we've known them for, I think, two or three years now. And it wasn't until this year that I found this out about her. And when she told me I looked at her, I'm going, get out of town. She goes, no, it's true. And this is the story. Now, ever since I've known her, um, she has had white, white, white hair. And I just figured, she's got white hair, you know? Well, coming to find out, we're at, this is about, I'm gonna say, four weeks ago. We're sitting in there for Shabbat at their dinner table and stuff, just talking. And she says, well, my hair hasn't always been white. I go, well, I kind of figured everyone kind of, you know, I'm getting thin, some people just get gray, you know, whatever. And she goes, no, 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 this happened in one day. I go, oh, you died, so you're, you're dying here, no. And then she goes through this thing. She goes, I was on a mission trip, I was a, I was a leader. And she goes, we were having a prayer group, and we're all praying, and, and it was in uh, the Ukraine. And they're all praying, and it got really intense and with her and she said it got so much so that i was by myself and everyone ended up leaving me and i was just there with yahweh and she said now granted at that time my knowledge of the truth wasn't fully there she goes i was learning toward it at that time this is back in the 90s i think it was and but she goes i wasn't there yet but i was learning and growing in things and and um and then she said steve i was so close she goes i was weeping i was she goes it was her, her words, it was not flying crying, okay? And that's how much she said she, was, she just felt the presence there. And she, I asked, well, how long did that? She goes, oh, it went for hours. And then she said, now, she goes, Steve, I looked down. I was glowing. I go, what? You know, I mean, come on. You're not Moses, you know? And she goes, Steve, I was glowing. And then... And then she said, all I can do is laugh. And then she says about a half hour later, her friends come back to the, to the room where they all were and they're knocking on the door just to make sure she's there and stuff. And she lets, she lets them in. And they all go, <gasps> and then she goes, you guys see this? I, 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 am I really going? She go, they go, yeah. And then, and then they go, but your hair. She was a brunette. And she goes, what, what's wrong with my hair? She goes, they go, go look in the mirror. She went to the mirror, her hair, white, white. And it's been that way to this day. Wow. <laughs> Can you imagine being that close? And oh, oh, and get this, this is funny. 
She said, the glow stayed with me for like two days. I can get out of town. She goes, no, it did. And she goes, and we're in the Ukraine. We're, we're doing their public transportation and stuff. And she says, people were just staring at me. Because she's, I'm glowing. And I go, you're in the, you, I said, you, the Ukraine. She goes, yeah. I go, isn't that close to Chernobyl? They're probably thinking you went to Chernobyl. And she goes, well, that may have been what they thought. But it wasn't. Now, the thing is, can you imagine being that close? Having something like that happen to you. When someone is that close to the Father, the enemy has to step aside. When you are that close to the Father, the enemy cannot stand in your way. Now, do you want to be that close to the Father? What are you willing to give to be that close? What are you willing to give to be that close? We all have things we want. But there's only certain things we're willing to go for. Only certain, we can say, oh, I want this. Okay, well, are you going to get it? Well, I, I want it, but it doesn't mean I'm going to get it. What are you willing to do to be that close to the Father? Too often, we have come to conferences like this, and we, we, um, we just come to see what we can get. We come to see what we can learn and go on. But how often do we focus on what we're going to give when we come to these things? Too many times we come with the motivation to get. And he wants us to give. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 16. Three times a year, all your men must appear before Yahweh, your God. At the place he will choose, at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles. No man, no man should appear before Yahweh empty-handed. Now granted, I understand that's for the feast days. And I also understand that we cannot appear before Yahweh at this time because there's no temple. I understand that. But our motivation should still be the same. We all knew there was going to be a group here. We all knew that we're going to meet with him. What was your motivation? See what you can get or what you can give. What did you bring him tonight? Or did you come empty-handed? I'm not talking monetary. I'm, not, I'm talking you. What did you bring or did you come empty-handed but yet still expecting to receive him in just the same? I like to wrestle with my children. <laughs> My son is eight years old. He thinks he's 28. And sometimes I think he is too with his strength. And we'll wrestle. And we'll wrestle. And then finally he realizes that, you know, because sometimes I'll let him win. But there's, you know, those times when, you know, he's got to learn. Hey, I'm bigger than you, bro. <laughs> and so I wrestle with him. And then finally when he realizes, okay, this is one of those times dad's not going to let me win, he starts yelling, Nadia, Nadia, that's middle sister. And then Nadia just comes running in. And Nadia, and all of a sudden Nadia comes out. Nadia, she's smart. She's, one, she's a teacher I've been telling you about. And she knows my weak spot. You know what my weak spot is? Don't tickle me. Don't, if you tickle me, oh man, I'm like jelly. Okay. And she knows this. She's learned this over the years of fighting and wrestling and stuff. So all of a sudden, but then I, I, I tense up and I keep going. All of a sudden, then they realize they both can't make, get me. Then they both start yelling for, Nicole! That's big sister. Nicole! Then all of a sudden, big sister comes running. And this happens a lot. I'm, I'm telling you what happens a lot. And then, you know, then finally, you know, after wrestling with them, I'll let them win. Now, it's funny because I can't help to think all the times about when they come at me. I want to get you, Dad. You know, and then they all start going at it. And then we'll go a little while. But now, how often have we tried being a 
threat to the enemy. And he just laughed at us. We call for our friend. And he's just laughing at us. We call for our third friend. Teaming up on him. He just laughs at us. You see, we've all heard about the seven sons of Sceva of Acts. Acts chapter 19. It says, And the evil spirit answered and said to them, I recognize Yeshua, and I know about Paul. But who are you? Who are you? The story continues on. That one man who was even possessed beat up all seven of them, stripped them of their clothes, and they run out the door bleeding. Now, my question is to you tonight. Does the enemy know who you are? Does the enemy know who you are? Or does he just laugh at you knowing you are no threat? Your child's play to him. Now, you might say, oh, he doesn't laugh at me. No, 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 no way. I'm this and I do that. And that's well, great. I'm, I'm glad. But folks, we can make all the threats to the enemy we want. But if those threats are coming from behind a jail cell of sin, do you really think he's going to take you seriously? You see, well, you say, Steve, I'm not bound to sin. Oh, I'm not bound to sin. I'm, I'm, I'm set free in Yeshua. Great. You don't have to convince me. But are you convincing the enemy? Anybody ever seen the movie Up? I like that movie. Now, if you know something bad about it, don't tell me, because I, that's, that's I, I always like that movie. There's always, something, there's always a bad thing about a movie here and a bad so it's just, Well, tell me later if, uh, if you do know something about it. Nonetheless, I like that movie. And in that movie, there's a dog. And the dog has a famous line that everybody knows him for. You ready for it? Squirrel. He's talking, doing this. Squirrel. He's talking, laughing. Squirrel. Everybody knows his line. Everybody knows it. Because we what? We identify with it. We do. What? See? Now, my question is, are we distracted and defeated just as easily? Are we distracted and defeated just as easily? You see, we can say, I'm going to get you, Satan. You just hold on. I'm going to get you. That's great. And he can respond by saying, oh, really? Hmm. You have gossip written all over you. <gasps> hey, did you hear about so-and-so? Did you know that? I'm going to get you. What? <gasps> hey, hey, did you guys hear about? Squirrel. I want to get you, Satan. I want to, you just wait. I want to get you. Oh, really? Really? You have greed written all over you. Hey, did you know? Did you see the latest? Did you see the latest of this? You need this. I'm going to get you. Ooh, that is nice. Squirrel. I want to get you, Satan. You just wait. I want to get you. Oh, you have lost all over you. Look over there. Ooh, I'm going to get you. Oh. Squirrel. I want to get you, Satan. You just wait. I want to get you. You just wait. Really? You have unforgiveness all over your face. Look over there. Remember that? Remember what he did to you? I want to get Oh, that, I remember when he did that. Squirrel. I want to get you, Satan. You just wait. I want to get you. You have pride all over you. Arrogance? Oh my goodness, you are something else. You know what? You are good. You, I like what you have. And you know what? You're right about that. Those other guys, they're all wrong. But you're right. I guess, well, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Squirrel. You can insert any weakness that you have. If you fall that quick, do you think he's that threatened by us? Do we really think we're a threat to him? If you can just throw it out and fall, down we go. And all the time, Yahweh is saying, why? Why can't you just stand up and fight? 
Do we really think we're that good? Do we really think we're that good? Romans chapter 12. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the grace and with the measure of faith God has given you. Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Now, imagine with me, if you will, a whole army bound in their own personal handcuffs. A whole army bound in their own personal handcuffs. A whole army. How threatened do you think the enemy is to this whole army? Do you think he's threatened? This one is bound by this. This one's bound by that. One little temptation, they fall to this. One little temptation, they fall to that. Is he, is he really concerned about us? Now, to make matters worse, imagine that huge army in their own handcuffs being separated by the enemy into different camps. Different camps. We're going to call this, well, we're going to call this the calendar camp. We're going to call this the name camp. We're going to call this the 12-hour Sabbath camp. We're going to call this as if the enemy doesn't know a kingdom divided against itself can't stand. Do we think he's not the one orchestrating some of this stuff? A kingdom divided against itself will not stand. Do we really think the enemy is scared right now? The enemy doesn't care how much we know. He only cares on how much we act upon what we know. That's it. We can know a ton, but if you ain't acting on it, what are we to him? Does he really have so many of us numb to our own sin and divided and fighting each other that he doesn't have to worry about fighting us because we're too busy fighting each other? He can probably just throw a couple things here, a couple things there. Okay, guys, let's go. They'll be busy for the next week. And a lot of times we are. Not even once trying to fight him. We're too busy fighting each other. How can someone raise hell when hell has them on a leash? The answer is they don't. They don't. And Yahweh's crying, saying, when will my people be the overcomers I've called them to be? When will they grow up? When will they walk in my strength? When will they experience the power I have for them? Is the body of Messiah falling to the ways of Balaam today? You see, Balaam couldn't defeat. He couldn't curse Israel. How did he defeat them? Through their own personal weaknesses. He got them to fall to their own temptations. And then he could curse them. How many of Yahweh's people are selling their birthright for temporary pleasures, for temporary anger, for temporary wanting to be right, for te you name it, temporary. The world we live in is temporary. How many of us are selling our birthright for something that is so temporary? Many of Yahweh's people, excuse me, many of Yahweh's people are being defeated because they are more concerned about being right in an argument instead of living right before their Creator. And he's just crying. Ephesians chapter 6. Put on the full armor of God. We know this verse. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Did you hear that? The devil's schemes. It doesn't say the devil's power. It doesn't say the devil's authority. It doesn't say the devil's strength. It says the devil's schemes. His schemes. See, the enemy knows 
He has no authority over us. He can't defeat us. This is why he tries to deceive us. The only, this is the only way he can defeat us, is if we fall prey to his deceptions. So, so many depict Satan as this big, muscular, evil guy. Pitchfork, horns, full of muscles. That's how you normally see it. Nothing could be further from the truth. Nothing could be further from the truth. Now, we have chickens, and here recently we got a new breed of chickens. We're all excited about it because they're big. I mean, they're really big. And we're all excited. Man, we're going to get a lot of meat off of these things. You know what I'm saying? And so just about a week, uh, four weeks ago, I had my friend come out, and it's time to butcher. And so I go, man, let's get to the big ones first. I want to get them, you know. And we start plucking feathers. I'm plucking feathers. Goodness gracious me, how many feathers does this thing have? Come to find out, and I am telling you the truth, there was more meat on my regular chicken than this thing. And when you look at them live, side by side, I'm telling you this thing stood four inches taller, four inches plump, but after the feathers were all gone, excuse me, this thing was puny. I go, what in the world? And even my friend's going, wow. <laughs> and it was just like, I can't help but think. You know what I thought about? And this is what I thought about. I thought about the next verse I'm going to share with you because it's amazing to me. And it's this. Those who see you stare at you. Talking about Satan. Whenever it's all, when he's thrown into hell for the thousand years, many believe. Those who see you stare at you. They ponder your fate. Is this the man who shook the earth and made kingdoms tremble? The man who made the world a desert? Who overthrew its cities and would not let its captives go home? This puny little guy? Are you kidding me? If we only knew who is deceiving us. He's a deceiver. He's not an overcomer. He's been robbed of it, stripped of his glory because of his rebellion. He's nothing. But yet we still fall prey to his deception. Folks, listen to me. We can't be defeated. We can only be deceived into defeat. I want to say that one more time. We can't be defeated. We can only be deceived into defeat. Overcoming the enemy starts with overcoming you. You want to raise hell? You got to start cutting yourself down. You want to raise hell? You got to raise you. Take up your cross. It all starts with you. Work out your own salvation. Philippians 2.12 Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always heard, I sorry, always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation in fear and trembling. It's the fear and trembling that I'm wondering where we stand today. How often we approach the throne like it's nothing. Forgetting it's the creator of the universe up there. Second Chronicles, a verse we've all heard. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. It's time, excuse me, to race, to run the race like we mean it. It's time to run the race like we mean it. I don't want to walk. I don't want to jog. I don't want to skip. I want to be in an all-out sprint 
to the finish line. And when I fall over that line, I want to fall in his arms and hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. That is all I want to hear. I don't want to hear, Steve, you were right on this topic and that topic. Steve, you were nailed it on this. No. Well done, my faithful servant. Servant, a nobody. Didn't make himself somebody. He's the somebody. He is the somebody. Just because you do things for Yahweh, it doesn't mean you are living for Yahweh. Let me say that again. Just because you do things for Yahweh, it doesn't mean you are living for Yahweh. I've seen too many people who start this and start that, and they want Yahweh to bless it. Well, why don't we think about maybe getting in His will, and it will be blessed. Amen. You know, Revelation, back to our text. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. That phrase was said to every single church. Did you know that? Exact same phrase. said to the, every single of those churches. This whole night, since I've been up here, the Spirit has been speaking to all of us on something. Every single one of us. Every single one of us. About things that are in our life. And He's saying, it's time. It's time to get it out. It's time Consider the verse just before this one. Revelation 3.21 To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I overcame, and sat down with my Father on his throne. He overcame by crucifying the flesh. He overcame by crucifying the flesh. Are you a threat to the enemy? Or are you child's play? Are you child's play? See, you know. You know you, and I know me. Work out your salvation. I can't work your salvation out. You can't work mine out. And it's not right for me even to judge you. I, I know nothing about your walk. Even if I, you were my, a close friend of mine, I don't know what you're thinking, doing, talking about, whatever, whenever. Only you can do this. I'm going to begin wrapping things up here. Are you a threat to the enemy? Or does he just laugh at you and only you know? You see, one surrender to the Father will never surrender to the enemy. If you have fully surrendered everything about you, there's nothing left to surrender. He can't have it. That's when Satan will run from you. Because it's not you he's running from. It's him. Because it's him who is in you. The question is, who do you surrender to? Folks, it's time to turn the tide. First day of the year. I'm ready. I'm ready to see Yahweh move. You know, we, we talk about when we grew up in, you know, in the church. I've always heard of in a New Testament church. I'm ready. I want to see miracles. You know, when you, you read the book of Acts, Wow, they may, have, they may as well have been glowing. I mean, the shadows, Peter's shadows, healing people, shadows. Are you a threat to the enemy? Are you child's play? I'm ready. Are you ready? You see,
I want to be in a place in my life. I want you to be at a place in your life that when Satan whispers in our ear, you can't take the storm, that we respond with, I am the storm. You've got it backwards, buddy. You're entering into a battle. You can't win. You better run now. You see, when my children come and play with me, I know. But there's going to come a time when my son, he's going to be bigger than me. And I will not be fighting those fights anymore because I know I'll get beat. <laughs> That's what we need to be with the enemy. It's time to grow up. It's time to become the overcomers that he's called us to be, to set everything in this world to the side, to walk with a walk that says, I don't care about me. I care about him and what he wants me to do, wants me to be, wants me to say where I'm supposed to go. We've all got different pulpits. Wherever you're walking, we've got a different pulpit. Yours might be here. Yours is over there. Mine is here. What are you preaching to the world around you? Do they see Yeshua shining through your eyes, speaking through your voice? What do they see in you? Excuse me. You see, we're supposed to be like him. And when we're like him, the enemy will run in fear. The one who tries to put fear in us will be the one running in fear because he sees him in us. He's not seeing us. You see, if you see Steve, then I have failed. Then I have failed you. If you see him, that's obedience. That's walking in him. You know, who am I? To get mad at somebody if they do me wrong. You're not doing me wrong, you're doing him wrong. This life that I live is not mine, it's his. It's his life. And this life, how I live it back to him is my gift back to him. It's not my life, it's his. What you are living, it's not your own. What are you giving back to him? Are you saying, no, this is mine. I have a right to this anger. I have a right to this sin I walk in. No, you don't. It's his life. He's given you the opportunity to walk in his ways, to experience his life in you and your, his blessings. Excuse me. Are you ready to raise hell? It's time to get on our knees and fight like real men and women of God. To fight on our knees. It's time to get on our knees. To not be thrown around by every little temptation, every little wind that the enemy throws at us. But no, to stand strong in him and say, I don't need that. I don't want that. I want my heavenly father. Remember the next stretching we did earlier? There's a reason why I did that. You see, Yahweh called his people many a times a stiff necked people. A stiff necked people. I have a couple sheep. I love them. They're brats sometimes, but I love them. And there are times when they get out of their pen. I gotta chase them down and try to get them back in. And sometimes I gotta fight them to get back in. Because I'm trying to do the right thing. Because I know that there's wolves that are gonna get them, but you know, that are around our area. The coyotes, not wolves, we have coyotes. 
But here's the thing. Yahweh's not going to keep fighting you. If you stay stiff-necked, you know what he's going to say? Okay, but you can have your way. God forbid that we stay stiff-necked when he pricks our heart. And tonight, you're given the opportunity to get one-on-one with him. And a while ago, I said, the Holy Spirit's been speaking to all of us. And many of you are probably thinking, oh, great, what's he going to ask? What's he going to do? What's that matter? You know, call me old-fashioned, but may I tell you what? I can't tell you times I've gotten one-on-one with the creator of the universe right in this area on my knees. But he's not going to fight you. He's not going to beg you. He's not going to pull you. He's going to ask you. He's going to gently invite you to come. You see, it's all about getting one-on-one with him. And saying, Father, I need you. I don't want my ways anymore. I want to be the overcomer that you've called me to be. I don't want to be thrown to the left and to the right with every single temptation that comes my way. I want to be the conqueror. Is that your prayer? You see, there's a scripture. Deuteronomy 10, 16 says, Circumcise your hearts, therefore, and do not be stiff-necked any longer. Please, folks, don't walk out those doors the same way you came in. Don't walk out the same way you came in. Let him who has ears hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Is he calling you tonight? Is he saying, you know what? It's time to raise hell in your life. It's time to raise hell. It's time to get it out. Cut it down. Remove it. Remove it. Anything that's in your life, cut it down. Get rid of it. You don't need it. It's temporary. Why in the world sacrifice the eternal for something that is here today and gone tomorrow? And you're going to go with it if you don't. I don't know where you're at with your walk, but I can say this one thing for sure. I know you because I know me. We're all alike. No matter where our walk is, you may say, man, Steve, I am way up here. Well, I may be feeling like I'm way down here. And you're here, that's great. But you know what? He's wanting you up here. You're never going to be where he wants you to be. Because when you reach that one level where he's been bringing you to, it's time for the next level. I'm asking you tonight. If the Father has pricked your heart, any little law, I'm begging you, please, don't harden your heart. Can we find a place to pray? Anywhere down here, as she plays the piano, if she sings a song, whatever she's going to do, can, you, can we come and say, Father, it's a new year. I want to start it right. Can you find a place? Set your pride to the side and not care what people think, what people believe, what people think they know, but be more concerned about what he does know. Whatever he's pricked your heart on, something big, something small, whatever it is, can we come at this time and find a place to pray?